Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Perfect. Okay. Uh, as you said, this is the clinical trial session, and I would like uh, to show you what uh, we in, in Heidelberg have been uh, doing so far. Well, history is extremely important uh, here at our institution. We have a very long history, not only of uh, radiotherapy in general, um, but also in, in, in conducting trial. Uh, this is an image from over a hundred years ago where already Vincent's journey uh, performed clinical trials here in, in Heidelberg. Of course, uh, over the time, the equipment uh, has changed and it looks a little bit different. Um, these are some models and on the right side, actually a, a real photograph from the treatment room coming from the pilot project at uh, GSI uh, in Darmstadt where we treated our first patients with, with carbon ions uh, in the 90s. And of course, I need to talk uh, about the GSI experience first. Um, uh, in 1997, December 13th, uh, I hope it wasn't a Friday, uh, at least the, the story went, went quite well. Besides that, the first patient was treated successfully with, with carbon ions period until 2009. During this pilot project, we were able to treat 440 uh, patients at that facility. Now you must know that uh, the, the GSI is a pure research uh, institution and we only had very limited slots um, for, for treatment uh, of, of patients. But the results that were uh, gained during that period were um, really very um, promising. Uh, I will just quickly go through the GSI experience and then focus on the clinical trials we, con uh, we conduct here. Uh, very typical indications that were treated are skull-based chondrosarcoma, like here this image of an 18-year-old girl with uh, quite typical uh, symptoms um, of, of, of double vision due to the localization of the chondrosarcoma here on the left skull base. Uh, and although the response to radiotherapy uh, often needs a significant amount of time, here we have the 10 year follow up of that patient. Um, and if I show that to uh, one of my fellow radiologists, they would rather see that as a unsuspicious finding uh, coming from the initial um, tumor here. So radiologically, it takes really long, but gladly the symptomatic relief can be achieved in a very short period, like here uh, already a couple of weeks uh, after radiotherapy. Other typical indications that were treated in that period in Darmstadt were skull base chordoma and uh, sacral chordoma. Um, typically radio-resistant tumor. We see here this two, uh, T2 hyper-intense area in the skull base with uh, infiltration of the spinal canal, sometimes compression of the spinal cord or um, the brainstem um, with the need for a high uh, radiation dose. So uh, it checks all the boxes um, where patients are eligible for particle therapy. And also sacral chordoma. Uh, unfortunately, the animation is, is lost here, but quite similar compared to the image uh, I've showed you with the skull base. We see here a rather large tumor um, of uh, originating from the sacral bone. And over a period of several months, we uh, see the very, very uh, nice response to, to carbonine uh, treatment. And what has been really a story of success and is accepted uh, basically worldwide as standard of care carbon ion treatment is for malignant salivary gland tumors, especially the so-called adenoid cystic um, carcinoma. Uh, my, my colleague Thomas Held and also uh, a few others already uh, told you about the rationale and the outcome of patients with adenoid cystic carcinoma using carbon ions. And uh, frequently we're talking about improvement of progression-free survival, which is really nice. Um, but if we look here at the overall survival, this is almost a gain of two years in overall survival when adding carbon ion uh, treatment 
uh, to the regimen for, for those patients. So extremely convincing, and that's also why it has become a uh, standard of care. The first trial um, uh, that was performed back then was the so-called COSMIC trial. And uh, since the lecture is called the Heidelberg approach, I would say this is a rather typical um, um, design for that trial, for, for the Heidelberg trials, because it is not a carbon only trial, um, but it is rather uh, the addition of a carbon ion boost to a previously planned photon um, plan. So we see here the planning situation really nasty and large uh, tumor, the correlating uh, carbon ion boost Typically, 18 uh, gray RBE in six fractions were administered, followed by a photon plan, including the primary tumor, but also elective node irradiation with 50 gray. And we see uh, the nice response here uh, in the, in the first follow-up uh, image. In that very early analysis coming from Schulz Erdner, um, we couldn't see an overall survival yet. But uh, these Kaplan-Meier curves for local tumor control, I think they go without any further comment, a tremendous uh, improvement of local control by adding just the carbon uh, ion boost. And the decision to just add a boost was basically done uh, historically. As I said, it was a very limited resource only for a few weeks uh, during, during the year since GSI was a research facility. So we tried to treat as many patients as possible. And by just performing a boost irradiation, you have only a few sessions. Um, you can get most out of your uh, available beam time. But this tremendous local control improvement also translated then into overall survival improvement. So not very surprising that these extremely convincing um, and promising clinical data finally led to the decision that we built a dedicated clinical facility. The construction of HIT was performed during 2003 to 2009, and the opening ceremony uh, was then back in 2009. Initially, actually, uh, it was planned um, to have only one horizontal beam line and two rotating gantries. And uh, whenever you looked at the images of our rotating gantry, you know that it is a unique masterpiece of, of engineering. It's gigantic because uh, of the high energies needed to accelerate and the high magnetic field strength needed uh, to keep uh, larger ions such as carbon ions uh, on, on their path. Uh, so it is really a, a, a tremendous piece of, of engineering uh, and uh, it was extremely expensive. So that's not surprising why the hospital administration decided let's go for just one gantry and, and two uh, horizontal beam line. And this is what our facility looks like these days. Um, we have here uh, the ion sources. We have the fortunate situation that we have three permanent ion sources. Currently, these are protons, carbon, and, and helium ion. But for um, basic experiments, it would also be possible to connect uh, other ion types, for example, like uh, oxygen. Then we have a short LINAC here, accelerating the ions to roughly 10% of speed of light. And then they are injected into our synchrotron, where they can be accelerated up to 70% of speed of light. And then extracted and deflected to our um, three treatment rooms. And this construction, the rotating gantry, is really unique for a very, very long um, period. It has not only been the first one, but also the only one in the world. Um, I think uh, it was in 2019 that the uh, colleagues from NRS also um, started treatment with uh, their uh, carbon gantry which is a little bit more compact because they use superconducting magnets, making uh, the structure a little bit smaller and more compact, but still we're really talking about significant sizes and weights, nothing comparable to a, a sole proton gantry or to, to, to a photon um, gantry. Our treatment rooms are equipped with an in-room CT, at least uh, this one. Just opposite, we have an MRI available where we can scan the patients in treatment position and have a shuttle 
uh, uh, installed. And then there's also an experimental um, treatment room with an online MRI on rails. Currently, uh, the so-called Artemis project, uh, project um, uh, is, is ongoing where I put a significant amount of resources into the investigation of uh, the behavior of particle beams uh, in the magnetic field, um, comparable um, uh, to the research projects ongoing with MR-guided uh, radiotherapy in, in, with photons. So we have a, a very unique uh, setting um, and we try to uh, use the beam as, as much as possible. Um, so operation is 24-7. Is These are some uh, impressions from inside the treatment room. Typical patient routine is between eight and nine. Before and afterwards, there's uh, QA time from the medical physics department and uh, experiments and accelerator settings are performed uh, during, during the night shift. Since the opening in 2009, um, we have uh, currently treated more than 8,000 um, patients so far. Uh, and the catchment area is basically 50-50 divided into local patients coming from a surrounding of roughly 50 kilometers and the rest are national or even uh, international um, referrals. The surrounding is really unique. Um, the radiation oncology um, department uh, is just located next. So uh, the HIT facility is fully integrated into the, the university hospital services. We see here the so-called clinic ring. We have here the, the Kopf clinic where our home base is with our ward. We have internal medicine, surgery, gynecology, children's hospital and children's oncology. Currently a huge construction site is here to build the children's, a dedicated children tumor center just next to the National Center for Tumor Diseases here. And inside that ring, exactly in the middle, uh, is our uh, facility um, located. So we are very well connected to all the other disciplines. And what is also quite uh, special is the a close neighborhood of translational and academic research. So here's the university uh, area with biology, chemistry, physics, anatomy, and the German Cancer Research Center is also just located um, on the campus. Uh, clinical wise, uh, in the National Center for, for Tumor Diseases, we have 27 interdisciplinary tumor boards for any uh, uh, organ group. Um, and in these tumor boards, we perform a regular screening um, for, for trials. Also the personal uh, equipment, the staffing of our um, uh, department um, is uh, of course uh, extremely important. And we have 22 attendings, 26 residents, 78 therapists, 30 nurses and nurses and uh, more than 20 medical physicists for the photon department and 12 medical physicists um, for, for the HIT department, but uh, also a dedicated clinical trial center um, since our main goal is to perform as many treatments within uh, clinical trials as, as possible. From a technical side, we are in the fortunate situation that we have the whole spectrum of modern and uh, high precision techniques. We have five Linux from Electa, one tomotherapy, a Meridian MR Linux, CyberKnife, brachytherapy unit, the possibility for intraoperative um, radiotherapy, of course, our particle therapy institution, and an ETOS at the German Cancer um, Research um, Center. And this gives us the unique possibility also to do comparative treatment planning between those techniques uh, and, and to decide which strategy, which technique suits best for the personal and individual situation um, of the patient. We treat roughly uh, 4,500 patients per year. Uh, most of them are uh, on an outpatient clinic, but of course, um, some who, who have either comorbidities or need concomitant chemotherapy or special um, uh, services can be treated uh, as inpatients on our 62 beds um, ward. We also have a, a dedicated um, diagnostic department in-house with two CTs, two MRI, uh, access to a PET-CT and, and 
ultrasound. So as you see, the, the technical and the personal equipment um, is, is rather favorable to perform uh, clinical trials. And this is also our main goal. Of course, there are some standard indications for protons, um, which we've talked before. And then yesterday also in the talk for um, pediatrics, I showed you the, the main indication for, for children. Um, and as I said, 95% of the kids are uh, anyway registered to, to prospective registries or to treatment optimization um, protocols. For adults, we try to include as many patients as possible within clinical trials. Most of them phase two trials, a couple of phase three trials, um, uh, basically covering different uh, anatomic um, regions. Um, so there's uh, basically from head to foot, um, uh, everything is, is, is there. Um, a couple of um, trials like the COSMIC or the EXCEPT for adenoidocystic carcinoma, which I showed you, they are already published. Also, um, uh, have we talked already about the osteosarcoma trial, the so-called OSCAR trial. Many of the initial early phase trials we started in the 2010s uh, are currently under uh, analysis, but there's also a long list of clinical trials still ongoing and, and recruiting and uh, continuously we are developing new clinical trials. So far, we have enrolled more than 1000 patients into clinical trials um, only for particle therapy. One trial I would like to emphasize uh, is the currently ongoing GRIPS uh, trial, glioblastoma radiotherapy with IRMT against protons, because this is something that is frequently demanded. We need a head-to-head -head comparison um, of protons against the, the standard of care of photons to really prove um, uh, the, the, the clinical benefit. This is a large uh, multicentric prospective phase three trial comparing um, the standard arm IMRT against protons. And as I discussed it already in the, in the CNS talk before, the endpoint is not um, uh, an improvement in oncologic outcome, but uh, rather a focus on the cumulative toxicity rate, as we have seen from our previous publications, that there is the potential to reduce uh, higher grade um, side effects. Of course, progression-free survival, overall survival, um, quality of life, neurocognition, and uh, also the special focus on, on lymphocytes, absolute lymphocyte count for translational programs are uh, investigated. For protons as well, we are just about to start uh, the Indigo trial, which covers the topic of LET and RBE optimization um, for protons, for CNS tumors, mainly for low-grade bryoma. And uh, it is a first step to um, biological optimization, not only of helium and carbon ions, but also um, for protons. We discussed that also in the uh, CNS talk, uh, the rationale for uh, biologically optimization of, of protons. This is also going to be a multicentric prospective um, phase two trial, and we plan to enroll 120 patients randomized either to conventional treatment planning with a fixed RBE or allocated uh, to, to model guided um, replanning. When looking uh, at, at the trials, um, we have uh, if you want, so several tracks. Um, there are those trials where we try to compare uh, particle therapy against the current standard, um, uh, against photons, which is uh, currently ongoing, for example, in the CARE trial, carbon ion re irradiation for recurrent head and neck cancer. As we discussed previously during the course, Carbon ion is, uh, there's a strong rationale to use um, particles um, for pretreated patients in the re irradiation situation. And uh, we are currently uh, doing the head to head comparison carbon ion re irradiation against photon re irradiation for head and neck patients to see whether we can improve the outcome 
by using carbon ions. The ACO trial is also important. It's an evolution of the pre-existing um, experience coming from adenoid uh, cystic carcinoma. We compare the current standard of care, which is already photons and carbon ions, against an approach of limiting um, the irradiated volume and using carbon ion only. This is uh, currently um, going on. Um, I can quickly jump over that because we talked already about the COSMIC trial. This is the concept of the ACO trial. Inclusion criteria are locally advanced uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma um, with an indication for uh, radiotherapy, but without positive uh, lymph nodes. Um, and then we perform uh, the carbon ion only treatment, 66 um, gray RVE in um, 22 fractions uh, against the current standard photon primary plan, 50 gray uh, and, and carbon ion boost. And the primary endpoint is local regional control at five years. And this trial from uh, Professor Herfahrt is also supported by the Deutsche Krebshilfe. Um, besides the comparison of particles against photons, we also have an interparticle uh, comparison trial track where we uh, compare the efficacy and the outcome of protons against uh, carbon ions. And there uh, we have typical uh, particle uh, entities like uh, chordoma of the skull base, a large phase three uh, randomized trial, carbons against protons, ISAC, the same basically, just hypofractionated for sacral um, chordoma, for chondrosarcoma, and uh, then just uh, recently initiated the role of neoadjuvant irradiation, especially of retroperitoneal soft tissue sarcoma with either protons or carbon ions and neoadjuvant irradiation of uh, tumors of the uh, extremity. Oh, that's twice uh, retro iron. That they should stand extreme iron for extremity uh, sarcomas, where we try to reduce uh, the rate of uh, impairment of wound healing by the use of um, particles. So really a classic um, are the skull-based chordoma. Um, as I said, currently ongoing, the head-to-head -head comparison of um, carbon ions against protons, but um, our GSI experiment, experience has been published by uh, Matthias Uhl, looking at 155 uh, patients with a median age of 48 years and a median follow-up of 72 months, looking at local control, overall survival and long-term toxicity. Baseline summary is no high-grade toxicity uh, and um, uh, um, uh, local control um, of 80%, 70%, and 54% after 10 years with an overall survival of 95, 85, and 75. And when looking into that cohort, we could see um, that uh, age uh, is a prognostic factor uh, as well as the size of the tumor, a boost uh, volume or GTV volume of less than 75 millimeter is uh, prognostic favorably. Uh, and then these are also um, uh, points where we continue to perform our research to, to improve the, the treatment to, to address these issues. Skull-based chordoma, quite comparable, um, a planned uh, number of 344 patients uh, are planned to, to be enrolled. And uh, again, the comparison of carbon ions uh, against protons, carbon ions typically hypofractionated with three gray per fraction, 21 fraction against uh, protons um, up to uh, a cumulative dose of, of 70 um, for gray primary endpoint is five year local progression free survival, secondary endpoints toxicity. And then we're looking whether the um, use of, of, of carbon ions leads to um, the same or even better results in terms of, of uh, local control. Because if we look at the localization, this is really critical. And we actually had a few uh, dropouts because we saw um, that the 
um, that the coverage uh, of, of the GTB is so unfavorable with protons in certain individual situation. Although it's a randomized uh, constellation, uh, that we had long discussions uh, how, how to deal with that complicated situation, but uh, there was a clear dosimetric benefit um, for, for carbonides, and this is why sometimes uh, we say that. that um, going further to sacral chordomas, um, also a typical indication, the ISAC trial is uh, currently under in investigation, recruitment has been stopped, and for hypofractionated RT of protons against carbonines, both um, hypofractionated 64 gray RBE in 4 gray um, per fraction, so a, a slight increase of the single dose. Uh, as you might have noticed, um, the, the, the Heidelberg trials typically use a uh, dose per fraction of three gray, um, which is rather different compared to, to the Japanese um, approaches where you have higher single doses and coming from 16 fractions to less and less and almost to single um, dose irradiations, whereas we stick to the three to four gray um, per fraction. And there's also actually a reason um, behind that. Uh, I mean, uh, also uh, the scheduling is different uh, between the centers. We perform treatment six times per week, whereas the Japanese colleagues perform four times um, per week. And we've seen that the therapeutic window is, is quite narrow. This is a work from um, my former colleague Tillman Bostel looking at sacral insufficiency fractures uh, uh, in high dose irradiation of sacral chordomas. And what we could see is that um, by increasing the single dose from three to four gray um, per fraction, it, it seems uh, that there's a tendency for, for more uh, toxicity. So the, the therapeutic window with uh, that approach is really narrow. And, um, but on the other hand, with our three gray per fraction, which is sometimes also referred to as the, the gentle approach, um, we, we have uh, achieved really good uh, experience and clinical results. That's why we basically stick to that way and then try to further um, evolve clinical trial protocols. I think I can go quickly over the OSCAR trial because I've talked several times uh, about OSCAR and, and also my colleague Katharina Zainza talked about that. Um, but it's really a, a milestone trial because the prognosis for inoperable high-grade osteosarcoma and in the trial it was really uh, uh, the worst selection bias um, possible, including metastatic disease, inoperable disease, recurrent disease, but still we had a rather favorable progression-free survival and could um, um, actually offer a treatment strategy for those patients who would otherwise have no um, uh, treatment option. Um, at, at all. And to the time, uh, sake of time, I unfortunately can't go into all the, the ongoing clinical trials, but later this afternoon we will have a round table discussions on, on clinical trial. I think it's at uh, 3.45 this, this afternoon, and I'm quite sure that we will have the possibility uh, to discuss uh, other trial designs, the necessity for uh, further uh, trials uh, this afternoon. And with that, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very interesting uh, survey and uh, impressive, uh, actually, number of uh, clinical trials. Uh, let's see if there are any questions. In the share document, we have no questions. So uh, participants can uh, raise hand and ask verbally the questions or type in the Zoom chat as you prefer. Uh, Fatima, please uh, uh, switch on the mic and ask your question. Yes, hello. So um, I have a question about uh, the carbon ion boost. So in your presentation, you talked about carbon ion boost. Uh, my question, is it a single treatment uh, that is without additional treatment, uh, for example, without chemotherapy, or there is a case where he had uh, the administration of an additional treatment. Yes, that's it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Um, in the beginning, as I said, we often used just a carbon ion boost as an add-on to, to photon treatment. 
but from um, preclinical experiments, biological experiments, in vitro investigations, we know that we can't rely on the experience of combination treatments that we're familiar with with photons. If you use the same regimens with carbon ions, you could see other uh, effects. That's why, especially in the beginning, we have been hesitating to perform concurrent radiochemotherapy, for example, with carbon ions. But uh, it is actually uh, not the case anymore. There are also clinical trials, for example, lung cancer, neoadjuvant uh, irradiation for sulcus superior tumors, where we perform radiochemotherapy um, uh, for, for those patients. Um, and uh, looking at the pathologic uh, remission rate, um, this is uh, rather impressive and, and promising. So in the future, I'm quite sure we'll see more and more trials also evaluating the combination um, effect. Thank you very much. I see one more hand. Uh, yes, uh, please. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice presentation. Do you hear me? Yes, yeah, very well. Yeah, okay. loud and clear. Uh, I have a very special question about the duration of the trials. Uh, for randomized trials, usually we give at the at first when we organize the trial a certain time for the recruitment. Do you have such a condition or you continue recruitment as you may recruit the patient up to the number you are looking for without concern about uh, the speed of this recruitment? Um, important question. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, for the um, initial trials and the current ongoing trials, there is nothing like a safety period. For the MR LINAC, where we have currently ongoing um, dose escalation trials, where we really um, push, push the border and, and want to see what is the maximum safe dose um, to, to be administered. Of course, we have this uh, safety um, uh, period installed, but for the carbon ion treatment based on the experience that was conducted already during GSI and sticking to the fractionation, um, it is not implemented into, uh, let's say, the big phase three trials. In, in other trials where we evaluate how many fractions do we actually need, for example, for hepatocellular carcinoma, where we had dose escalations, there we had those different dose levels with a required waiting period to evaluate uh, not only efficacy, but especially um, safety. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, any other question? I do not see raised hands. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, the very clear presentation and the interesting uh, discussion uh, also, and see you later.